Uh, we know what it looks like when Luca's off the floor, and that's been since he got there, really. He does so much to give him a lead, goes and gets a drink of Gatorade, and an eight-point lead's now a six-point deficit, and he's got to come back in and try to save the day. So they wanted to give him another weapon, particularly when he's off the floor. So that's why Dallas did it. But for me, when I look at what Kyrie Irving has done here now, what he has become, and look, I don't know anything about Kyrie Irving in, in his interpersonal relationships in his life, so let's separate the two between a basketball player and a human being, because I don't know, you know how he interacts with the people in his life, but as a basketball player, he's a narcissist. And the problem with that is when you're not accountable or have no obligation to anyone else other than yourself, it's very difficult to win in team sports. And that's how I view Kyrie Irving. And now it's just another stop along this journey. Is he going to be bought in and engaged? I'm sure he's going to look that way initially. How long does it last? How, is he even happy watching Luka Doncic play the way he plays and dominate the basketball to the extent that he does? All that remains to be seen. But if I'm Dallas, I wouldn't have touched this. I, I would not have traded for Kyrie Irving. I think they gave up a, a lot to get him. Yeah. And I think Brooklyn, look, when Kevin Durant comes back, it's his team. He's got a lot of guys around him now that look like a basketball team. And I agree with Woj. Like, they probably still need more to win the East. But there's no question in my mind. You get back Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith and then going forward in the future around Kevin Durant, that's good enough, I think, to win around probably and then give somebody fits in the second round, one of those top three teams. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.